Hi everyone and welcome to another crime and punishment story. This week I am covering the story of Hugh Spark, William Dwyer and the murder of John Henry Mooney which took place in Newcastle upon Tyne in 1839. But before we begin can I just say if you do enjoy this video then please give it a thumbs up and if you are new here or haven't already done so then do please consider subscribing to the channel to help support the content we create. Thank you. And I would just like to also add that I do record these stories live so do sometimes make mistakes which I do always try to rectify so I hope this does not spoil your enjoyment of this video. Due to the age of this story, there is very little information to be found about the earlier life of Hugh, William and John. Unfortunately, sometimes the past lives information is just impossible to find, so their details will be fairly basic. Hugh Spark was born in around 1818 and was around 21 years old at the time the crime was committed. His place of birth and his parents are unknown. However, it is known that Hugh was a cabinet maker and though he could read, he was not able to write and he was described as being around 5 foot 7 inches tall. William Dwyer was born in around 1821 and was around 19 years old at the time the crime was committed. Just like Hugh, his parents and place of birth are unknown. William was a blacksmith and according to his criminal records he was able to both read and write and he was described as being around 5 foot 7 inches tall with a long nose. John Henry Mooney, the victim, lived in Newcastle in 1839 and he was estimated by his friend John Goodwin to be between 30 and 40 years old at the time the crime was committed. I did not find any details where his age was confirmed and all reports give a similar estimated age. His place of birth was said to be Liverpool and his parents were unknown. It was thought that John Mooney had previously worked in Ireland and that he had a wife who was still living there. Due to the fact that several people have the same Christian name in this story, I will for the main part refer to them by their surnames to try and save any confusion. John Mooney lodged with a man by the name of John Goodwin at Jesmond Vale and on the night of August the 31st 1839 the pair set off for Gateshead to visit a friend of Mooney's. While they were there, they both had a drink of rum, then headed back to Newcastle. They walked up Butcher's Bank on their way to Pilgrim Street, and there they met two women. The women asked them to buy them a drink. Goodwin said no, but Mooney seemed to like the look of the women, and they persuaded him to go into Shade's public house, where they had a couple of pints of beer. Around this time, one of the women got into an argument with another woman who had been inside the pub at the time, and she left, leaving the two men in the company of Sarah Stoker and Sarah Smith. Smith lived close by in Silver Street near Meeton House Lane, and she invited the two men to her house. Again, Goodwin did not want to go, but Mooney headed off with the women and Goodwin followed. On arriving at the house, which was on the third floor of the building, Smith asked Mooney if he was going to send for some beer. Mooney then handed over some money and Smith went out to get some beer and tobacco. Once outside on the stairs, Goodwin heard her talking to what sounded like two men. He did not hear what was said, but Smith left soon after and the two men came into the house. It was then that things took a sinister turn. One of the men asked why they were there and did they know it was wrong to come. Mooney said they had been invited by the women for a drink and he did not know that it was wrong to come to the house. Goodwin quickly realised these two men were looking for a fight and tried to leave, but before he could do so, one of them hit him and knocked him to the ground. He tried to get out of the door, but Stoker pulled him back inside and the men took hold of him and pushed him down the outside stairs. When he got up, he looked back towards the house to see both men take hold of his friend by his arms and legs and throw him out of the window to the ground below. 
John Goodwin then rushed down the stairs to his friend. Realising he was badly hurt, he quickly went to look for a policeman and a doctor. When the policeman arrived, he went with Goodwin to the house, but the men and women were nowhere to be seen. They only found three children in bed and a woman sitting in the room who Goodwin did not know. When the doctor arrived, he immediately had John Mooney taken to the Newcastle Infirmary at Forth Branks, where he would remain for several weeks. The two men were quickly identified as being Hugh Spark and William Dwyer, and they were both charged with unlawfully wounding John Mooney. John Mooney died some five weeks later as a result of his injuries, and Hugh and William were then charged with the willful murder of John Mooney. The inquest was held in October of 1839 before Coroner Stoker. It was held at a public house near to the infirmary. Mr Macmillan of Silver Street stated that he had identified the body as being that of John Henry Mooney. He said that on the night of August 31st at around 11pm he had been walking up Silver Street in the direction of Pilgrim Street when he heard voices. It sounded to him like two women arguing. On reaching Meeting House Lane, he heard someone cry out, Murder! It sounded to be coming from high up in the houses, and on looking up, he then saw John Mooney come out of the window, he believed, head first. He landed on some stone steps on the ground further down the street. He immediately went over and saw that John had a badly broken bone in his thigh. It was showing through his clothing, and the man was insensible. He said it was less than 15 minutes after this that Mooney was taken away to the infirmary. And Mr Macmillan went on to say that a man ran out from the houses and that he had grabbed hold of him asking if he had been the one to throw Mooney out of the window. He said he was not. He was John Goodwin, the man's friend, but he knew who had done the deed. It was just after this that another man came down the stairs and Goodwin said he was one of the guilty men. Mr Macmillan said he knew this man to be called Hugh Spark. He said the house in Silver Street had a bad reputation. Many people lived there and there was often fights taking place. He felt that a man could easily fall out of a window during a struggle. John Robinson said he had been in Newcastle on the night of August the 31st. He had seen Hugh Spark and William Dwyer at around 10pm standing by the door of the Hen and Chickens public house. He passed them and went into a house on Silver Street to visit a friend, Isabella Jack. He said some short time later he heard some men and women pass on the stairs, on their way up to the room above Isabella's. And a short time after this he heard more footsteps on the stairs. He then heard loud voices and he knew one of them to be William Dwyer. They seemed to be shouting and threatening someone. Mr Robinson then went on to say that he heard what sounded like a man tumbling down the stairs. This he now knew to be John Goodwin. And then only moments later he heard someone shout out, Murder! He heard voices in the street and someone saying a man had fallen from the window. He went outside and saw William Dwyer. Isabella was with him and she accused William of robbing the man and then throwing him out of the window, but he did not reply. He said he had been one of the man to, men to help take John Mooney to the infirmary and on his return at around 1am he saw William Dwyer in the custody of the police. He said William had a trade as a blacksmith but he rarely worked and was at the house in Silver Street almost every night. Mr Robinson described the house in Silver Street by saying that there were six rooms in the building and three or more women lived in each room apart from the one he visited where only one woman lived, and the house was well known in the area. He did not go as far as to say it, but he appeared to be describing what we would now call a brothel. Sarah Stoker said she was a married woman, but had been separated from her husband for two years. She now lived in Silver Street with three other women. She claimed that she had left the house 45 minutes before the murder was committed. She admitted that she had been quite drunk and could not clearly remember the night in question. She believed Hugh and William had been at the house at around 10pm, but she did not remember any other men and did not know which of the girls had taken the two strangers back to the house. She also said 
that she had taken what she believed to be Scotch men to the house earlier that night, but they had not been there for long, less than half an hour, and she herself had come down the stairs with them and back out into Silver Street, and she denied taking anyone else back to the house that night. Sarah continued by saying that when she returned to Silver Street, a man was lying on the ground with a crowd around him. She did not go to look to see what was wrong. Isabella Jack said she was a single woman living on the floor below Sarah Stoker. She said she'd been asleep but was woken by a loud noise. On going outside, she looked from a window and saw a man lying on the ground below. She said William Dwyer passed them and she accused him of robbing the man and throwing him from the window, but he did not reply. She said the house was one of ill fame and the men, such as William and Hugh, would often fight and rob strange men that the women brought back to the house. John Goodwin said he was a labourer and was currently lodging at Jesmond Vale. He said on August the 31st, along with Mooney, they had first visited Castle Garth where they had gone to a shoemaker's and at the time they had both been quite sober. After this, they had gone to visit a friend of Mooney's at Gateshead. He had not been there, but they had stopped for a time with the man's wife and had both drank half a glass of rum. They then returned to Newcastle and it was in Pilgrim Street where they first met two women. He said he knew both by sight but only knew the name of one and this was Sarah Stoker. Sarah Stoker asked if they would buy them a drink and John said he was not keen. He called Stoker ugly and said she would get nothing from him that night. However, the other girl had persuaded Mooney to go with her to the pub, so he and Stoker had followed. Mooney bought some beer but he himself did not have any. He said it was while they were in this pub that Sarah Smith arrived. She argued with the woman whose, woman whose name he did not know and then she left, leaving them in the company of Sarah Stoker and Sarah Smith. On leaving the pub, he said Stoker asked them back to the house of Sarah Smith. Goodwin said he did not want to go and told Mooney to come away with him, but by then the couple were already walking towards the house. And because Mooney was carrying a fair bit of money, Goodwin said he thought he'd better go too, to make sure that he didn't lose it. He said he was not sure what time they arrived at the house, but once inside, Smith asked Mooney if he was going to send for some drink. Mooney gave her some money and she left. Goodwin said he then heard her talking to two men outside on the stairhead. He believed she had gone down the stairs after this and then the two men came into the house. One of the men asked why they were there and Mooney said the women brought them there for a drink. He said he thought the men were getting angry and he told them we don't want to fight, we can leave. But one of the men, who he now knew to be William Dwyer, got up and struck him, knocking him to the ground. He lost sight of Mooney at this point and said he believed he had left so he tried to do the same. But Stoker pulled him back inside and William then struck him again and he fell down a flight of stairs. John said he then looked up at the doorway and saw the two men take Mooney by his arms and legs and throw him out of the window. He said he then hurried down the stairs to see if Mooney was okay and realising he was badly hurt he went to find a policeman. John said he had identified William Dwyer at the police station on the night of the crime and in more recent days he had also identified Hugh Spark at Newcastle Prison as being the other man involved and he was certain that these were the two men who had attacked Mooney. Elizabeth Hutchinson said she was a single woman living in Hunter's Entry in Newcastle. She said she had been in the company of Sarah Stoker when they had first met John Mooney and John Goodwin. She claimed that it had been Sarah Smith who had argued with Sarah Stoker, and it had actually been Sarah Stoker who had left. She said along with Smith she had gone back with the two men to the house in Silver Street. And she said in hide, inside the house were two other girls. One was asleep on the bed and the other was sitting by the fire. Elizabeth said Sarah Smith asked Goodman for money to sleep with her and he gave her half a crown. And she said she took the same from Mooney. After this, she said they both left the house, leaving the two men inside, but they did not go for any drink. They went further up the stairs and sat down. She said William and Hugh then arrived, and Smith called to William and asked him to put the men out of the house. 
She heard one of the men say they would leave if they got their money back. After this, she heard scuffling on the stairs, but did not look to see what was going on. And the next thing she knew was that a man had fallen from a window. She said she went with Smith to look in the street and saw a crowd round the man. She said they both then ran away and did not return to the house. The jury questioned the evidence of Elizabeth and the coroner, it seems, did not believe she was telling the truth and told her because of this she would be sent to prison. John Goodwin was recalled and he said that he had gone to the house with Sarah Smith and Sarah Stoker and that Elizabeth had not been there. He said he saw no one sitting by the fireside when he went inside the house, but he did see Elizabeth on the stairs later that night when he had been with the policeman looking for the men who had attacked Mooney. He said he did not see anyone sitting on the stairs when he was thrown down them, and he had not given any of the women half a crown, and neither had Mooney. Sarah Smith said it had been she and Elizabeth Hutchinson that had gone to the house with the two men. She said she did not ask either of the men for any money for drink, but that one had given her half a crown and the other had given Elizabeth the same. She said they went out to get some drink and went up the street to the Hen and Chickens pub. They heard a noise and came back towards the house and found the man lying on the ground with a crowd around him. They then left and went to Gateshead. She said she went back to her house the next morning and was told she would be arrested, so she went away to Darlington, but she was still arrested later by the police. She said there was no argument in the pub earlier that night, and she had not asked William Dwyer to put the men out of the house. In fact, she said she had told him to leave, as she had company. And she also stated that she had not sat at the top of the stairs with Elizabeth. And her evidence, it seems, was entirely different to that of both Elizabeth Hutchinson and John Goodwin. Mr Greenhow said he was a surgeon at the Newcastle Infirmary and he said he had first seen John Mooney on the morning of September the 1st. He found that John had a severe compound fracture to his right thigh and some bruising to his head. He did not find any signs, any other signs of injury. He said he had set the brake to the thigh and had taken care of John himself for around two weeks. He had progressed as expected. These kind of breaks, he said, would often result in death due to infection. He also assisted in the post-mortem and was of no doubt that the death was as a result of the injuries received from the fall. John Fife said he was a surgeon at Newcastle Infirmary. He had first seen John Mooney on September the 8th. Although Mr Greenhow had taken very good care of him, John Mooney was by now in a very serious condition and he had not expected him to live and he had been correct, as he had died a short time later. He said he was also present at the post-mortem and agreed with his colleague that death had been caused due to his injuries from the fall, stating that the wound had been weeping as was often the case with these kind of fractures and he did not know of many who had ever lived after this. The coroner said if the jury were to believe the evidence given by John Goodwin, then they should have no difficulty in finding the two prisoners guilty of willful murder. He said he did not believe that there was sufficient evidence against any of the women, and any charges against them would be dismissed. The jury retired for only a few moments before returning a verdict of guilty of willful murder against both Hugh Spark and William Dwyer and they were committed for trial. I did not find any evidence of a funeral for John Henry Mooney. The trial took place at Newcastle in February of 1840. Although no location is given, it is to be assumed that it would have been held at the Moot Hall. Both William Dwyer and Hugh Spark pleaded not guilty to the charge of murder. The majority of the evidence given was the same as at the inquest, but some new witnesses were called. P.C. Snowden said on the night of the crime he had gone to the house of Sarah Smith with John Goodwin to look for the man Dwyer, but he was not there. He returned a short while later alone and found a man sitting by the fireside in the house. He took this man into custody, but Goodwin said this was not one of the men. He returned to the house a third time, and this time found Dwyer in bed. Dwyer immediately said to him, It was not me, I did not do it. 
and when he asked him what he had not done, he had replied, I did not throw that man out of the window. Pacey Snowden said he then took Dwyer to the police station and John Goodwin said that he was definitely one of the men who had thrown Mooney out of the window. He was sure of it. Pacey Harrison said he had gone the following day in search of the man who they now knew to be Hugh Spark. He said he found him at his brother's house in Pottery Bank. He said he told him that he was to be charged with throwing a man out of a window in Silver Street and he said Hugh replied by saying... I am aware of it, I was going to hand myself in. And he also said, It was a bad job that I was in the house, and I would not have been there had I not been the worse for drink. Both men were later charged, said P.C. Harrison, with the willful murder of John Henry Mooney when he had died. The defence stated that the main witness, John Goodwin, had not been in his right mind at the time he had first given his statement, as he had still been suffering the effects of his accident. However, it was still for the jury to decide if he was telling the truth or not. He continued by saying that by his own admission, John Goodwin had said that he he and Mooney had been drinking that night. So was it not possible that because of this an argument had arisen at the house between them and the men Dwyer and Spark, and in his rush to help his friend, Mooney had simply fallen from the window and had not been thrown out at all. He went on to say that after his accident on the stairs it was hard to be certain what Goodwin had truly been able to see, and his evidence may not be entirely truthful. He ended by saying it was for the jury to decide if there was enough evidence to convict the prisoners with the charge of willful murder. The judge, in summing up, discussed the case and evidence in great detail. He spoke of the witnesses telling different stories, and many of the women did not seem to agree with each other, even when they had claimed to be together. And he also said it was for the jury to decide if they felt this was a case of murder or of manslaughter. The jury retired for only a few minutes before returning to give a verdict of manslaughter against both Hugh Spark and William Dwyer. And at at this, the judge then sentenced them both to 15 years transportation. The two men would later be sent by the Justicia Prison Hulk, I hope I've pronounced that right, to Van Diemen's Island where they would serve out their 15 years. I found no further confirmed evidence of either man after this, so it is unknown if they ever returned to the UK, but it is possible that William Dwyer did not return to the UK and that after serving out his sentence he had married and had children and had worked as a blacksmith and remained in Australia until his death. I found this to be a very confusing case. The evidence from the various various women was clearly not the entire truth. The two women, Elizabeth Hutchinson and Sarah Smith, could not agree with each other, yet both had claimed to be together and with the men that night. Sarah Stoker was identified by John Goodwin as being with them that night, and yet she claimed to not be there at all. It was never clear what was said to Hugh Spark and William Dwyer to make them react in the way that they did. But, whatever the truth, a man still tragically lost his life for what seems to be no reason at all. And I do have to admit that I feel the verdict of manslaughter was the correct one, as there was no evidence of premeditation. The sentence at the time was also a very common one, as many people were transported in prison ships, or as they were sometimes called, prison hulks, for crimes such as manslaughter, and even for lesser crimes such as stealing and housebreaking. And sometimes those who had been stealing got the same length prison term, transportation term, as those who had committed murder and manslaughter. But what do you think of this story? Do you think the women were involved more than they admitted? Do you think John Goodwin was really able to see the two men throw John Mooney out of the window after he himself had just been pushed down some stairs and was most likely to be slightly dazed? Do you think the verdict was the correct one? Do please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do hope that you have found this sad and tragic story interesting and I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.